So you just learned all about finding homes that you can potentially flip for profit. But now, what do you do with these? Find out in this video as I take you through flipping homes in South Texas stage two, analyze. This is such an important stage, so be sure to watch till the end. I'm Lexi Esparza, the realtor that educates. I'm an investor friendly agent and I'm here to help you begin flipping homes and become financially wealthy. The next stage to house flipping in South Texas is to analyze the deal. In this stage, you have to figure out your maximum offer. There's several numbers you'll need for this formula. Don't worry though, once you have the numbers, it's simple math. The first detail to analyze is the improvements that are needed. You should walk the home and take notes on all items that must, should, and could be fixed. Homefixers.com has amazing resources that you can download. I first learned about this in the book, Flip, How to Find, Fix, and Sell Houses for Profit by Rick Villani and Clay Davis. They detail all the must do's, should do's, could do's, and more. You can use their checklist as a guide when qualifying the home. I'll link it below. The must do's will be problems that are non-negotiable. In other words, you have to fix them. This can include safety, security, cleaning, structural and drainage items, the roof, exterior and interior carpentry, windows, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, concrete work, insulation, walls, cabinetry, doors, paint, countertops, floors, appliances, and landscaping. I know, that was a lengthy list. However, you probably won't be dealing with a home that needs absolutely all of those items fixed. If you are, you may want to evaluate whether you should be dealing with a home like that. You definitely can, but make sure it fits into your numbers properly. The should do's according to the authors of Flip are those last touches that really take the home from acceptable to up to par with the market. These are the things that make the home more desirable to buyers. In other words, if your market calls for white cabinets, stainless appliances, and granite countertops, then that's what you should have in the home. I do want to caution you though, do not go overboard with this. This is an investment after all. You want to ensure that you still make money. Therefore, do exactly what the market calls for. Don't do any more or any less than buyers are expecting. The could do's are described by Volani and Davis as the extra things that make a house a better place to live. They broke this down into five areas of opportunity to maximize profits. Amenities, opening between areas of the home, conversions, additions, and layout changes are all places of potential in your flip. For these, you want to really look at the home you're rehabbing and its comps. Is there anything that you can do to make the home more valuable? Will it make you more money but not cost you too much to do? If so, add that to your list of improvements. From this walkthrough of the home, you can create an extremely detailed scope of work or SOW. This is basically a document that covers every single line item or work to be completed during the rehab. With your complete SOW in hand, you'll need to start getting the cost of each task. You can use contractor estimates, personal experience if you have it, and or real estate investor colleagues to help you determine these costs as accurately as possible. Add the costs of improvements up and add about 5% more to that as a buffer. Unforeseen circumstances can arise, so you want to be prepared for that. Now you have improvement costs, Save that number for later. We will need it. Once improvements are determined, you will figure out the after repair value, or ARV for short. In other words, how much will the home be worth once you have completely rehabbed it? You will do so by running comps and examining the market to create a comparative market analysis, CMA. You can work with trusted professionals for this part if you aren't sure how to do this. As a quick rundown, you want to find properties that are built relatively in the same time period. They should be close in proximity and try to find homes with similar specs as far as rooms, bathrooms, etc. The CMA is a vital component to this formula. I highly recommend getting a real estate agent to help you if you aren't comfortable with this. Once you have pulled the comps, examined the market and talked to your real estate agent, you will come up with your ARV. Keep this number for later. We will also need it for our flip formula. So far, you have your after repair value and your improvement costs. The next number to figure out are your quiet costs. 
These are the expenses that are most commonly forgotten. Have you ever watched one of those shows about flipping homes on HGTV? You know how they show what they buy the house for, what the repairs cost, how much they sold it for, and then show their big profit at the end? Unfortunately, that's not real life. There are costs that you will have when holding the home during the renovation. First, when buying the home, you will likely have expenses such as the inspection fee, survey, appraisal, and title insurance. Then to hold the home, you will have to pay utilities, property taxes, insurance, and any maintenance fees. Moreover, if you purchase the home using a loan, there are quiet costs that come along with borrowing money. Sadly, it's not free. You will pay interest each month on your loan. Therefore, the longer you hold the home for rehab, the more interest you will pay. Lastly, it will take money to sell the home. You will have closing costs such as title, survey, appraisal, etc. Along with closing costs, you will pay real estate agent commissions if you choose to use one. These quiet costs aren't at the forefront of the rehab, but believe me, they are there. Don't forget to account for them. The last number you have to determine for the flip formula is your minimum profit. What is the least amount of money you are willing to make in this deal? This is entirely up to you. You can set a base number or decide on a percentage of the selling price. Whatever number you choose, be reasonable but wise. You want a profit that makes sense and does not sell your work short. We made it. We have all the numbers we need and now it's time to get our math going. To calculate your maximum offer on the potential flip property, you will use the flip formula. You will take the after repair value and subtract improvement costs, quiet costs, and minimum profit from it. The number you are left with is your maximum offer you can put in on this property. Simple enough, right? But now is the most crucial part. Tune into my next video to hear more about what to do when you have your maximum offer number. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.